welcome everybody to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. And so today we have a guest. His name is Brandon Beliso, Live Your Best Life. And he helps um, individuals, businesses, and companies live their optimal life. So he's a critical thinker, influencer, and his passion is to inspire the discovery of purpose. So today we're going to be talking about mindset, culture branding, self-improvement. So Brandon, welcome to the show. Thank you, Christopher. I'm very grateful to be here hanging out with you. Yeah, I know we had uh, discussed, you know, we're just connected through Podmatch and you know, I'm always trying to connect my audience with influencers and people doing great and wonderful things such as yourself. So tell us more about your background, your upbringing and how you came to be. Absolutely. Um, I grew up at a time when money was very short, so my family didn't have much money. So the philosophy was, uh, what do you think money grows on trees? What do you think I'm made of money? And I, I get it, my father was frustrated. He was a single parent trying to raise four kids under a very challenging situation. And then I wore my father's suit to my high school graduation. But once I recognized that money was simply a tool and that it didn't define who I was as an individual, it had nothing to do with my mindset or my self-worth or the value of who I am, then I recognized much like a vehicle money could be utilized as that tool. And that's when I think things started to change dramatically in my life. But I also recognize with financial wealth, it doesn't equal physical wealth, emotional wealth, mental wealth, spiritual wealth. So those are other things to create a balanced human being that helps us take the right action, make good choices, um, and be happy. Good times are bad. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, I like that idea of this um, idea that money is a tool and um, it doesn't define your worth because, you know, in the West, we're conditioned to strive and succeed in our income and our net worth. That's yeah. what we're on our status in society. That's how we're judged and measured. So this is really interesting. And um, the uh, question is, um, one thing is, uh, one thing I've noticed is in society, we, we, it, we're in this fixed mindset, you know, we're so like, almost like this, there's one path and everybody else, you know, kind of gets pushed to the side. How do you move from a fixed to a growth mindset? Well, I'm, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I've owned businesses my whole life, pretty much since my early twenties. And I recognize change is the key to success. I mean, as we negotiated this pandemic and, you know, there's still residual effects of that. Change was all that helped small businesses survive. If you didn't pivot, if you were a restaurant and you didn't pivot into DoorDash and Uber Eats and become a digital restaurant, you know, I remember going into a parking lot, buying food from somebody that was posting pictures at Instagram. I mean, talk about that disruptive critical thinking that, that it takes. I owned, one of my businesses is two martial arts schools and we had a thousand students. As soon as the pandemic hit, we dropped down to 750. We were virtual within a week, running 750 students virtually. And we did that for the better part of two years. We taught out of parking lots. We were doing everything through a software and our phones and people were purchasing memberships. So I think change is the key to success. And I love that you use the word fixed mindset, Christopher, because a fixed mindset is the death of all of us. You're a doctor. If you're not constantly taking seminars, bettering your practices, then you become obsolete right? Because technology is influencing medicine at a breakneck speed. So to embrace that technology in a balanced way, I think is very powerful. So once we understand a growth mindset is the key to our own personal development and our own financial success and even relationships, the relationship I have with my wife today, 16 years later, is not the same relationship we had when we were dating. But if we're not able to grow and change with that, then we can't adapt. Yeah. That's really interesting. I think um, what I found really interesting was in 2020, just people found so different, very creative ways to thrive and survive. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is during the pandemic, I would actually order and then I would just pick it up and eat in my cars. And um, mm -hmm. that was a lot of restaurants started a lot of their business boomed with just take out. Yeah, um, look at Chipotle. I mean, their <laughs> stock like doubled, quadrupled during the pandemic. They became a takeout 
digital restaurant, right? Their app is amazing. A friend of mine actually worked on that takeout app. And if you look at Chipotle's app, it is, as far as a customer experience, it's seamless and it's powerful. And so that ability to do that, I think is, is, is what makes a huge, huge difference in our own well-being. But I, I love that. I mean, that terminology of fixed mindset to growth mindset is really why we as humans suffer our inability to shift our mindset to whatever's going on in the climate today. Yeah, so that's powerful, Christopher. Yeah. So cool. um, the other thing is you talk about um, developing a brand based on purpose. Tell us more about that. It's quite, I found that quite fascinating. Yeah, I, I, I think the reason that is, is, you know, Simon Sinek has a great piece called The Golden Circle. And as far as this is great for our own personal life, but people start with, you know, what are we? And let's say I'm a doctor. And the biggest thing on this, on this, your website is a picture of you and your name. Okay, well, that's, that's what you are. Some people get to the how, quality, service, and medicine, and personal, you know, relationships, but nobody gets to the why. So if I had to ask you, Christopher, why did you choose medicine? What would you tell me? Well, I mean, I actually chose medicine just because of my cultural upbringing and, you know, a lot of a lot of it had to do with, um, you know, being raised, you know, in a first generation immigrant family, you know, you want to set the status, the standard for success. And you know, a lot of it was, uh, you know, based on financial stability, security. But, uh, you know, once I achieved that, I was looking for more doing more of an impact. So which is why we're doing this podcast. Yeah. So there's your there's your catchphrase. It's ability to impact lives, right? Why do why am I a doctor? Well, because I like to create stability in people's and impact their lives. That would be a why. And see, it makes you smile because it's pretty accurate, right? Because if you're healthy, if your health is stable, you can impact your family, your job, anything that you choose to do. But if you're constantly sick, it's it's hard to get into a groove, right? It's hard to do that, Christopher. So. The why is so important because nobody wakes up in any of my companies and says, how can I make Brandon a lot of money? But they do all wake up and say, well, how can I help people live their best life? And that's 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 my thing, whether it's myself, my family, my community, businesses. You know, I'm very big on helping people figure out how to live your best life, not mine, yours. Because I understand that, too. My father was an immigrant from another country and he wasn't the smartest. He had a sixth grade education, but he outworked everybody. And I think that sense of work ethic that you probably have, that your parents had, that was instilled in you, that was instilled in me, is what separates it. Right? Nobody starts out being brilliant. We work towards it. And if you have that type of work ethic and you work smart, then the ability to discover your why, to discover your purpose, why are you here? And we're only here for a second, right? And, and what do you want to do here? You want to accumulate a lot of toys? And that's nice too. Don't get me wrong. The first million I broke, you know, it was like, ooh, uh, considering I wore my dad's suit to my graduation and I went nuts for a little bit. And then I kind of pulled in the reins and said, well, are you any happier? And I recognized no. So I went on this quest for three years, walking through Joshua Tree by myself, sitting in the woods, beating drums with guys, anything it took, because I wanted to be personally rich. Because, you know, money, again, just a tool. It's it's materialism. And I'm, don't get me wrong, I live really well. So people mistaken that, that I, I'm saying live poor. No, I'm saying live well, but don't negate. A Louis Vuitton bag is not going to make me a better person. It's simply not. It's a brand. So the yin and yang of that is really important or you never get to the why. Because everything's, look at my watch, look at my car, look, you know, and keeping up with the Joneses becomes your addiction, which is for some people works fine. You know, they enjoy that. That works very well, Christopher. But I think waking up every day with a sense of purpose uh, is very fulfilling. You also talk about, um, so how do people discover their purpose? You know, it's kind of... You know, a lot of people they they you know in school were just taught just you know this cookie cutter approach you know follow the rules and yeah. you'll be fine but you know how do you people discover what they're meant to do i think it takes a lot of courage you know i know a lot of generational families where the dad is a dentist the son is a dentist his son is a dentist they even have a family practice you know my dentist in his office the father the son and the son are all dentists and that's cool because what they're really saying is, is it's not about being a dentist, it's about family. And their why became very clear at some point. 
It's not what I do. It's why I do it. And if you becoming a doctor made your parents feel stable and they felt like, you know, we came all this way here as an immigrant for a better life for our kids. Wow. So they feel that sense of accomplishment. So I would imagine family is very important to you, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. But the yin to the yang of that, Christopher, is do you have the courage to step out of that? Right? Unless it, it, it is your core value. Family is my number one core value. I want to keep my parents happy. That's who I am. I've defined that. That's who Christopher is. But for me, it was really that path of personal development and, and putting myself in situations that were extremely uncomfortable. I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. I'm happy sitting on a train in Germany, going from city to city, teaching and speaking all by myself. I'm very happy with that because I'm anonymous and I'm out of my element. So I think it, 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 it's, it's inside every one of us, but we have to be brave enough to say, this is mine. And if nobody else is cool with it, well, you know, I don't know what to say about that because we do. I, my father was my martial arts instructor. I was the prodigal son. I stood in line. How many push-ups? Yes, sir. My whole purpose in life was to make my father happy. But then, much like my father, I am my father's son. I was just as strong-willed, had my own voice like him. I was independent like him. I was a critical thinker like him. And so, eventually, I had to walk that path. And was it rocky? Yeah. Did I have the support of my family? No, absolutely not. You do as I say, right, is the way my father lived. But through that suffering, I found myself. And it's a much more fulfilling life than simply being a soldier in my father's army. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And um, how did people, what you're describing is, you know, the path of self-individuation, self-actualization. And how do people create their version of success? They you know, you know, we have the media, you have Instagram, you, have, you know, all these celebrities. How do people distill, you know, the noise from the, from the, the signal from the noise? Well, I think we hear it. It's often a very trendy word, be authentic, be authentic. And if you will follow me at social media, I don't use the filters. I avoid all, all of that. What's the latest, greatest thing you should be using this frame, that filter. I just simply sit in my car and I post and it's content driven and it's very authentic because I believe trust is the last true form of marketing. And I say that all the time in a world of misinformation and straight up lies like that one yesterday, you know, they just find Alex Jones a billion dollars. How could you sit there and say it's a conspiracy that what happened at Sandy Hook? That's insane. That's, but you know what? People believed him. That's so scary <laughs> that people actually, without any type of research, <laughs> without any fact checking, they believed what he said at face value. That's really scary. That's really scary. So I think if you're out to cultivate your brand, then number one, you need to have a very clear message that is true, right? True to you, because that's where it begins and ends. We know in a Western culture, everything's external, right? I need a distraction. Let me watch this marathon on Netflix. You know, let me go out here and spend $1,500. I didn't really need to buy those shoes, but let's, why did I buy them, right? That's the Western experience. But really, the true journey is inward. And as Zen as that sounds, it is. But it's lonely, because inside you is you. Are you willing to pull back your own covers, Christopher, and take a look and go, oh, wow, I don't like that about me. So I want to change that about me because only I can make that change. Nobody else can change me but me. And that's 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 a rough time, you know, for a lot of people. And so they'd rather just, you know, post a selfie and wait, oh, I got 300 views. Yay, I'm wonderful. Everybody <laughs> loves me, right? Or I post this video, how many views did I get? That's really sad especially for our young people today, it really distanced them from themselves. And like, I think it was uh, Thich Nhat Hanh said that, you don't need a smartphone to know that you're smart. You don't need a Fitbit to teach you your fit. Be in tune with yourself, you know, know thyself. And as selfish as that might sound, the yin to the yang is the more selfish you can be, the more selfless you become. Interesting. Yeah, it's uh, you incorporate a lot of um, Eastern absolutely, principles and um, you know, I think uh, I think um, what's interesting is you know a lot of the West is starting to adopt this you know Eastern philosophy and it started to go in the mainstream. You know, you have yoga and 
you know, you have Zen, you have Buddhism. So um, I know you wrote a book which called um, Live, Learn and Grow, Lessons of a Reluctant Tiger, which um, I'm going to check out after our interview and definitely um, I encourage the audience to check it out it's on Amazon. So tell us about this book and then um, I know you also gave a TED talk as well. Tell us more about that. Absolutely. Thank you, Christopher. The book is an audible as well. You know, I like to tell people that I recorded that in George Lucas's studio, which is the most fascinating experience where <laughs> Lucas and Spielberg conceptualized Jurassic Park and Star Wars. It was just a little room and it was just wild. It was wild. And so I was able to narrate the book in that. So I kind of channeled their energy through me. <laughs> you know, really what it was about is, is growing up um, in the book, I, it's part of a, uh, it is, it's my journey of self-discovery and being in a foster home at 11 months old, my dad getting us back and then the physical abuse from my dad and then my mom leaving my dad for his best friend. I was molested at eight, molested at 12, carrying a gun at 12 years old, running in a gang. I had a brother that was a big coke dealer who OD'd and died at 26. I mean, it's filled with war stories, but what it's filled with is not survival, but transcending survival into living into mm. living and that's what it, that's why it's lessons of a reluctant tiger many days i was drug into self-discovery just through my own acts right of, of being acting inappropriately i would say and and it's fascinating because you hit that crossroads and it's either jails institutions and death or enlightenment and enlightenment's not fun ignorance is bliss it really is it really is because that self-actualization when we allow that to happen at first it's really uncomfortable it's funky and so when i wrote the book live if i'm learning i'm living and if i'm living i'm growing so it's important to me that that is my constant path and at 60 years old if i behave the way i did when i was 20 then i've learned nothing nothing and someone asked me that in a podcast though recently, they go, well, you're 60 years old. What would you tell your 20 year old self? I said, nothing. I'm not gonna mess up his 20 year old game. He should be out there partying and chasing girls and being an idiot. That's part of his self-discovery, right? That's part of youth. Don't mess it up with a bunch of wisdom at 60, right? So, so I, I think that's what the book does. I think it, I hope the book inspires people to have courage to write their own book and recognize that, that book was you know very cathartic for me it was part of my therapy in getting all these skeletons out of my closet into the light of day I should not be ashamed that I was molested at eight but I was ashamed for many years and I recognized by putting it in the light of day it no longer has power over me and that was crucial for me in, in my own personal development yeah that's that's quite a very inspiring and powerful journey very you know very raw and you know real so uh, one last question because we're coming up on time is um one is uh how to be use you know what your past you know and your your trials and your tribulations to become an effective leader in today's uncertain world i think you know i look at my team two of my guys bought houses in the pandemic i kept my core team strong i came back to work that's all leadership Leadership by example, right? I think creating a culture that's purpose-driven and not centered around somebody's ego. A personality-driven business is not sustainable. A culture-driven business is something different, but that takes a different type of leadership. The control and command leadership of post-World War II, do as I say, right? You had the boss, you had the managers, you had the assembly line workers. So there's that trickle-down effect. Now everything we do is a flatline management. I'm, I'm not the boss, I'm not the CEO, I'm part of the team. So that alone, and leading by example, if I'm in one of my businesses and a bathroom's dirty, I will absolutely clean that bathroom. I'm in it, um, I'm in it. And then I will happily walk out and say, hey, you guys, can you get the other bathroom? I took care of this one. So that's leadership by example. Uh, do as I say, not as I do, it's just so obsolete. And today's millennial and Z need a lot more inspiration than simply Here's a process, follow this process. I will grade you on this process. And if you do, you get paid. It's just simply obsolete. Yeah, that's it. And, um, you know, it's, I really enjoyed this conversation because, uh, you know, I'm all into self improvement, how to become a better leader, um, how to become a better influencer. So, and um, how do people follow you? Definitely check out your book. Um, how yep. to, is your website contacting you? Yep, yep. I mean, I have several podcasts. I have one called Mindful Meditation, 
which is about the mindset. Um, I have Success Never Sleeps, which is a weekly show I do live at Facebook and YouTube. Those are both in podcast format. You can follow me at Instagram. You can follow me at Facebook. Um, for everything else, in LinkedIn, of course. And for everything else, you can go to BrandonBeluso.com. Yeah. And you also have a YouTube channel, so definitely check that out. And um, yeah. it looks like everybody is having a YouTube channel, so that's really great to see. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think the, the, the part of that is don't allow social media to dominate your space. Use it for what it is. <laughs> Understand who your demographic is and where they play. You know, and, and I would think in your work, LinkedIn is powerful. I mean, I don't care how popular TikTok is. It's not my format. It's not my audience. So it's not a place I'm going to hang out, right? And, and you know, Meta's not going to look for me at TikTok. Meta found me through LinkedIn. And so it, it's, it's a different place to be. Yeah. And for all the listeners out there, um, uh, Brandon's resources will be in the links and show notes. And yeah. Oh, yeah. And don't forget to watch my TED Talk, Happy on Purpose. Yeah. Toby. yeah, and uh, that'll be in the resources as well. So um, yeah. thanks so much, and we'll look forward to hearing about your future success.